Hello learners, I am Manisha Gaur and today I have with me Dr. Sandhya Kumar, our expert in this show and now we are here to talk about yarn and its construction. Friends, what is yarn? You must have seen wool, roll, silk, filaments, yarns or you must have heard about all these names. So what are they? These are the materials that we require so that we can make a fabric later on. We will discuss in detail what is fiber, what is yarn and how the yarn is constructed from the fiber. And it's not that simple as it sounds. There are various definitions included in this yarn construction, various other filaments included in this yarn construction and there are specific definition for each one of them and now we will discuss each one of them in detail. So we will start with what is yarn. So yarn is nothing but it's an assemblage of fibers and what is fiber? Fiber is the thread like construction a thread like uh, material that we derive from natural sources as well as from the man-made sources. So fibers can be of two types. First it can be stable fibers or it can be filament fibers. In simple words I would say stable fibers are short fibers and filament fibers are long fibers. Now we have expert with us that can tell you in detail what is the definition of stable and filament fibers and how they can be used for making further fabric. Please ma'am. Thank you Manisha. Yes uh, we know that uh, the uh, Fiber is the smallest unit of any uh, yarn or material fabric that we have. It is the smallest unit. Now this unit can be either very small in size in which case it's called a staple fiber or it can be long, longer in length in which case it is called a filament fiber. And as Manisha has already mentioned, the fibers that we have today are obtained either from natural sources, they could be cotton, they could be jute, they could be wool or you know all these are staple fibers or the fiber that we obtain from the silk worm, it is very long in nature, it is continuous and it's long and that is called a filament fiber. So natural fibers again are short or long, staple and filament but the man-made fibers that we have which we make using chemical compounds, these are usually filament fibers. They are really long and if we want, we can cut them short and have staple fibers also. Now, usually what happens is the fibers as they are, are too weak to make into a fabric. There is a process by which these fibers are woven and made into a fabric, but by themselves, the fibers are too weak to make into a fabric. So we process these fibers to make them into yarns. There are special processes which we follow. If you look at this slide that we have right now, you can see that we have a fiber which is held in the hand. You can see it there. And these fibers are twisted. They are given a special treatment from which we get the yarn. And these yarns are again further refined, they are twisted, they are given special treatments to create different kinds of yarns and these yarns are then woven to make a fabric. Manisha will tell us more about yes, the yarns that we have. So ma'am you are basically saying that we first obtain fiber from the natural and the man-made resources. Exactly. We use some treatment, some twist into it and then we convert it into a yarn mm -hmm. which is more firm and stronger than the fiber itself exactly. and then after further twisting and uh, you know refining it a little bit and we make it into a thread and by which we make a fabric. fabric. This is what you are mentioning Exactly, ma exactly Banisha. Uh, so this is the process like we obtain fiber first and then we convert it into yarn. From yarn we move into the thread like we twist and we provide the treatment to it and then finally we make the fabric out of it. So let's move to the next slide and see what we can do 
what is the stages from the fiber to the fabric there are like various stages it's not that simple as it looked like in the slide so there are various stages and we will go one by one to each of them so what is a yarn yarn is nothing but it is just an assemblage of fibers that are twisted together yarn is more stronger and firm than the uh, fiber itself yeah i'll just request you I, i'll ask you to do something take any piece of cloth that you have at home pull out one thread from it you know it could be a piece of lungi that you have an old sari that you have a piece of uh, curtain that you have or an old pair of socks that you have or even an old sweater so just pull out one end of any thread and then unravel it untwist it you know when you when you see that thread you can untwist it when you untwist it you will see that you know there has been twisting that has been given to the fibers there you will when you open it up you will see more than one uh, fibers uh, over there so you may find two or three or four accordingly we'll discuss that later on also so when you open up a uh, yarn you can see the construction of the yarn there are more than one fibers in it you can see whether they are staple or they are long and how much of twisting there has been given to the fibers take a case of wool there are different kinds of wools okay some are very fine some are thick some are loosely woven some are very tightly woven so the amount of twist that you see affects the final product or the yarn that you have in hand so just to make it clear that you know we use more than one fiber uh, when we are twisting them together and we are uh, obtaining a firmer uh, final product which we use to make the fabric same is with mam silk also like some silks are very smooth some are very coarse kind of the surface of them exactly. like we have the various varieties so th there must also be the twisting and treatment material is being yes. incorporated so there can be stable and filament fibers that are used for making a yarn stable fibers as mam has already told you that these are the small fibers clean and then twist and treatments are given to them to form into a yarn that is a little bit longer and the filament fibers these are the long fibers itself and they are also being twisted together they are being held and the treatments are provided to make them into a long filament yarn here also you know you, as you can see that uh, we have put it on the slide that these staple fibers the shorter fibers are used to make the spun yarn yes and the filament or the longer fibers are used to make the filament yarn so the name of the fiber often is used also to identify the yarn that is coming from those fibers so shorter staple fibers make spun yarn and the filament fibers make the filament yarns mm -hmm. and now we will discuss how exactly we make a yarn from the staple fibers so when staple fibers are taken in a bundle when we obtain them from the natural sources they are often not clean so they have dirt on them they have dust on them they may have oil on them they may be colored uh, differently so they are dirty so first of all the first operation that we do is to clean the bundle of the fibers that we have and then they are laid straight they are straightened they are combed there is a special machine which combs these fibers and makes them straight into bundles and after the straight you were saying done, like we have our frizzy hair and we use the comb to straighten them exactly. likewise we have the bundle of the fibers, fibers. clean but and wash so they are like uh, you know they are like little bit frizzy and also we have to use the comb special to comb to straighten them, them, out. them okay and once they are straightened out then they are pulled they are given a little bit of traction and they are pulled and drawn so what happens is that the thicker bundle becomes thinner and finer mm. so while this is happening the pulling and the drawing at the same time a twist is also given to these fibers gradually see you can see that they are being 
uh, reduced in size, they are being lengthened, the length is being increased because they are placed that way and they are being twisted. So, while they are being twisted, they gather the strength and they become stronger yarns. Okay. Very well said ma'am. So ma'am, uh, like you have discussed that there is an entire procedure from uh, which the fiber becomes an yarn. So spinning is the whole process as you have just discussed in the detail in the steps that is used for uh, you know cleaning the fibers, combing them together and then pulling it and giving the required twist to make them stronger and firmer. So there is a, a kind of spinning also ma'am like there are mechanical spinning is done for the natural fibers and there are like chemical spinning also like we do it with the help of the chemical treatment and uh, other varieties. So ma'am can you just tell us a little bit about the spinning also like I think, how to I do? I think uh, Dr. Manisha the uh, easiest example to identify with yeah. is the uh, spinning wheel that was used by the father of our nation Gandhi. Yes ma'am. It is such a wonderful device where you can see if you if you watch any films uh, of uh, how the uh, spinning wheel is used you can see that the fibers are drawn and pulled and gradually they are spun on the wheel and the final product that comes out is a very fine thread that comes. So that is the final mechanical spinning that we are doing and this is done mostly for cotton and wool fibers. Okay. Mechanical spinning is usually done for natural fibers, we do not do it for the man-made fibers. The man-made or the uh, filament fibers that are longer in nature, the yarn that is made from them is uh, usually made using chemicals. How the chemical raw materials are used to make the filament yarns. Yes ma'am, I have seen at places that what they do, they dissolve the filaments from the silk and other man-made sources into a uh, liquid containing yes. the chemicals and then it will remove all that gum and everything that is being attached to it and then they are being pulled out and then they okay. are being uh, uh, you know passed through what is called as spin rate that spin is rate. look like a shower that we have at our home. So they are being pulled through all those pores in it and then we will get like very fine and long fibers as we you know usually get in the market of the silk fibers. I give you another example of the spinneret. If you have seen how uh, the halwai makes a uh, basin save, you know he's got a machine, a cylinder in which he fills the mixture of the save and then he presses from the top, there's a pressing mechanism and at the bottom you find there is a sieve with very fine holes. Now the, when the mixture is pressed from the top, the, it is extruded from the, uh, the jali or the, uh, uh, what the do you call it? The fine pores. The pores and, the and, and you thing. find the long yes, continuous strand of the sieve coming into the oil and solidifying. So that is exactly the procedure we use to make the uh, man-made uh, fibers where the chemical is extruded mm. through the fine spinneret, it goes into a solution where it solidifies and that is how we obtain the long filament uh, man-made fibers. Ma'am, this is a wonderful example, none of us will forget this now. That is there is a solution that solidifies into thread-like form and it's called as a filament fiber. Exactly. So these filament fibers are further ma'am twisted together according to the need and the requirement of the buyer and the owner or the maker, manufacturer of the fabric so that a very strong, firm and uh, durable uh, yarn can be made by which a fabric can be made later on. So a cotton fiber is made into a cotton yarn, a silk fiber is made into a silk yarn, a wool fiber is made into a wool yarn and say a nylon fiber or a polyester fiber is made into a polyester yarn. Right. So these are where we use the natural material or the man-made material to uh, formulate the yarns. But sometimes what happens is when I go into the market, I it, it is difficult to find a pure, pure wool yeah. yes, uh, yarn. So what I get is a terry wool or a terry cot 
and that sort of confuses me. Yes, ma'am, ma'am, this word pricks, you know, everyone's mind ki what is exactly is that? Yes, so the concept here is that we have blends. Now, what is a blend? It is when we use two different kinds of fibers to produce a yarn. So I may use cotton and wool. So I'll get uh, cot's wool or I may use terylene and cotton and combine them to two kinds of fibers. They are combined together, they are twisted together to then form the yarn. So I may find terricot, I may find cot's wool. There may be many other kinds of blends that you find in the market. Like when we have cotton silk also, that is also one of the blends. Exactly, now. it is. So the mixed fabrics that are made from more than one kind of fiber are known as blends. And as uh, we will discuss later on, you know, blends have been created because of certain properties that they have, certain needs that we had. So ma'am, we can see here that the terricot is, as you have just told us, it's a blended composition of terylone, terylene and cotton. Cot's wool is cotton and wool ma'am. Cotton silk is cotton silk. Wood acrylic is wool plus acrylic. So these are the some of the examples of the blends. And there are many more in the market ma'am as the uh, technology is evolving day by day so they, there is exactly. no dearth of opportunities, no dearth of uh, options in the market. So there are many more but uh, these are the commonly used uh, exactly. blends. So, so if we discuss why was Cotswold made? Because maybe I live in an area where I don't want very warm woolen fabrics. I need my woolen fabrics to breathe a little bit. So I added cotton and wool and I got a lightweight cotton uh, woolen fabric or cotton silk. Why cotton silk? I mean, I, either people wear cotton or they wear silk, but cotton silk because silk will give the fabric the feel and the, the shine, shine and, yeah. and the gloss and not become very creased. Whereas the cotton part of the yarn will give its breathing and comfort that is very typical of a cotton yarn. So when we combine the two together, we get the properties of both cotton and silk, both cotton and wool or terylene and cotton. Let us look at yarn properties. The most two important properties of a yarn are the fineness and the amount of twist. And these two properties are very interrelated. The more the twist, the finer the yarn is. So uh, when we impart more twist, the yarn becomes finer, smoother and stronger. If we want a looser yarn, we reduce the amount of twist that we give to it. And so uh, then it becomes a little bit thicker, a little bit fluffy. So we can have two ply yarns. We take two fibers together and twist them together to make it a yarn. We can take three fibers together, uh, twist them together to make it a three ply yarn and likewise. So this kind of arrangement of twisting of yarn is known as simple single yarn. By doing this process, we will get uniform twisting all over the yarn and we will get the simple yarn. So ma'am, basic properties of the simple yarn are the same as you have just discussed is that they are like smooth, they are uniform, they are evenly twisted throughout their length. It's basically uh, fibers which are assembled together and the right amount of twist are given to them. And the result in... Uh, fabrics like poplin and cambric, you can see they are very smooth to touch. They are very fine fabrics. So the finer the yarn is, the finer the final fabric that is obtained from these yarns. Now you will find that, you know, when we talk of fabrics, there are different kind of fabrics. So how do we get the difference in the fabrics because of the yarns? So those are the complex or the novelty yarns that impart the difference to the Fabrics. So ma'am, basic the principle in uh, complex yarn is, uh, it is same as the simple yarn. It's just that in the simple yarn, you are providing uniform twists throughout their length. But in the complex yarn, you can, uh, you know, adjust it according to your own wish. You can do some sort of experimentation, as I say. You can uh, put curls to it. You can make a loops to it by, you know, loosely twisting it together. You can evenly twist it like somewhere you will make it into a thick lump and somewhere you will just finely twist it to make it a fine yarn. So ma'am complex yarn is nothing but an experimental yarn I would call. You can do as many experiment as you like into it. Exactly and the difference can also be achieved by introducing yarns, uh, fibers which are differently colored. 
So then you will have a yarn which has different colors at different points. Again that gives a very interesting uh, look to the final fabric that is obtained. So when we talk of complex and novelty yarns, you know, uh, we find that uh, one example is a slub yarn which is alternately thick and thin in different places or we can have a spider or a jimp which is a combination of soft thick yarns twisted with along with fine and hard yarns. So again the final uh, product that we get is you know uh, somewhere hard and somewhere soft. So it's a different kind of a uh, surface that surface, we obtain on yes. the fabric. Like we can give very high twist and we can make it into a snarl yarn like we have yes. very high and very we want to make it a very strong fab uh, fiber or a very strong yarn then we can use the snarl yarn so that we can have very tight twisted and the little bit of the snipping coming out. So exactly. uh, likewise ma'am we can make a lot of fabric out of it so we are just uh, explaining one example like the khadi fabric ma'am like we have just discussed so yes. we have included in as our example also. That is it's a complex yarn where we have twisted in, in making it a thick at some places and thin at some places so that it will uh, ma'am give that the coarse look and the coarse surface that it has a texture of a very you know very uh, prominent texture that we can touch and feel it. Right. Now similarly you know you must have seen fabrics where uh, you have a raised surface so that again uh, the, that effect is again achieved by using the complex or the novelty yarns. Now complex or uh, ply, uh, in complex you know we use ply yarns which may be two or more than two which are twisted around each other using loops or curls and knots to create fancy effects. Now these effects again if you see uh, look at the uh, uh, slide you know we, we've got loops there is one ply which is running and on top of that we are using the loops or the twists. And it's like coiled over the one exactly. fine line. Fine so line. We, could, we could also have you know a, a yarn where uh, the uh, basic uh, yarn is held tight under tension and the knobs are built up on it on a in a very fast speed. So that again we find a different uh, texture coming out on the yarn and uh, you must have seen chenille. Uh, Chenel is a very common uh, fabric that we use in India which is used in dresses, it is also used in uh, bed linen. So that is something again very different and the texture of the chenille is also achieved through the different yarns and the uh, weave, uh, the making of the yarn and the properties of the yarn that and we the have. chenille is basically that uh, fine, very fine, very smooth surface uh, yes. fabric that we like to use in special occasions like that. Yeah. So there are some more examples of special yarns that we have. We can see coiled yarn, a rounded crimped yarn, curled yarn, high bulk stretched and relaxed yarn or peaked crimped yarn. Crimped yarn. So these are all examples of uh, complex yarns that we have. We use uh, complicated machineries, you know, complex machineries to create those effects in yarns and to make those effects in the fabrics that we have. So ma'am like we have like textured yarn as you have just told us in the example that you when you uh, unravel a sweater you will see that the yarn is not straight either it has a twist into it so that it will get a crimp effect or it will form into a loop so you will if you held it free it will take some sort of a curl, uh, curl. Yes. so that shows that it is a twisted yarn. And the twisted yarn we call it into a different name as a textured yarn like we are uh, discussing about the texture, textile and fabric so we give it into a textured yarn. And this texturing is usually chemically obtained. Mm -hmm. So it is not something that you can just do mechanically you, you can do it uh, use chemicals also to impart the texture to the yarn. Uh, texturizing is another treatment that is given and Dr. Manisha can we can you explain to our learners how texturizing is done? Yes ma'am it is basically a treatment that is given to a man-made filament fiber and it, after which it requires some sort of a property into it like it either it become uh, curl it become uh, coiled. Uh, coiled or it can attain a loop or some sort of a crimp effect is created into it. So that process is basically texturizing. Do you think Dr. Manisha that texturizing can be done for the natural uh, fibers also or is it restricted only to man-made filament fibers? No ma'am it's not like that. Natural fibers like cotton and wool. 
in cotton maximum texturization is being done because in cotton you have variety of uh, uh, fabrics coming into it and the cotton is one it can be mixed with wool it can be mixed with silk it can be mixed sure. with any with nylon as well okay so in cotton also you will try to give a uh, texturizing effect texturizing is nothing but it's a treatment that you provide to your uh, fiber to enhance its physical properties by giving it a certain crimpness by giving it a loop by giving it a coil so that uh, its uh, physical properties can be enhanced now learners there is one thing i want you to do when you i'm sure at home you use threads you have talked of you've learned a lot about yarns today uh, there is thread that we use for sewing uh, whether it be in a sewing machine or we are doing the sewing with our hands so threads are also yarns but they are highly processed and they are very fine and very even and are very strong so when we sew two pieces of cloth together we need a strong thread to hold it in peace so that it doesn't come apart easily so threads are yarns also but of a very fine and very high quality yarn so we can say that all threads are yarns but not all yarns, yarns are huh? threads so ma'am you are saying that the finest refinement of yarn is called a thread right. so learners in today's lesson we have discussed about fibers how the yarn is being processed by using fibers what are the different categories of yarn like we have discussed about stable and filament fibers and within the yarn there are like various kinds of yarns like we have simple yarn we have complex yarn we have textured yarn and within the complex and the novelty yarn we have certain types of yarn which are being uh, made by using certain kind of treatment or effect to it like we can give it in, in uh, give it a uh, you know special effect of coiling we can give it a special effect of crimping loop can be formed you know and likewise certain different kinds of yarns are being uh, made like snub yarn uh, coil yarn buckle yarn and likewise and after that we have also discussed about the difference between the thread and the yarn I hope you have understood everything and now you can clearly distinguish between a yarn thread and the fiber. Thank you.